Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. So, we are continuing our reading of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab's removal of doubts. It has commentary by Imam Muhammad ibn Saleh al Uthmain. And, man, this book has a lot of knowledge in it. And I'm glad that I read things for myself instead of just trusting what everyone else says. Because you can look at, I guess, there was a troubled past. I haven't researched it. But putting that aside, it's still just pack full of citations. So let's begin where we left off. Let me go over here. So, oh yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So if all intercession is for Allah, and this will only occur after he has first permitted it, and neither the Prophet nor anyone else can intercede on behalf of anyone unless Allah permits. See, it has a very logical flow here, if you notice. So, all intercession is for Allah. It's all based upon his permission. So what he's getting at here is, is if you supplicate to intercessors, you're doing an act of worship and you're attaching yourself to them. And that in itself doesn't make sense because if all intercession is for Allah, and nothing can happen without his permission, logically, you would go to the one who has the final say. You know what I mean? That's who you gotta go to. That's where the cookie crumbles. On behalf of anyone else, unless Allah permits. And since he does not permit this, except for the people of Tawheed, now this was interesting because I've been noticing the more and more you read the Hadith, this is why I really enjoy taking the time and reading it for myself, not cherry picking a hadith and bouncing around, but going from beginning, inshallah, hopefully, to the end. It's a huge monumental project. But once you see a hadith that speaks about Tawheed, when you see it in the Quran, it becomes so clear. And once you learn what shirk is, as you know, I read his book on shirk, you get to get a serious picture of like, Wow, uh, you, a real believer, has to be upon that. And I guess what I've been learning is, still learning, but a lot of people have been arguing about, is this true or is this not? Or does Tawheed even exist? And it's strange to me when I read these texts and you can totally see it. Maybe that's because I have a philosophical mind or textual analytical mind. But you can see it, you know? You can totally see what he's talking about. So him saying that the people of Tawheed will be granted by Allah's permission, maybe some form of intercession. But still, it's all going to come from Allah anyways. But if you've committed shirk, you're a polytheist, that ability ain't going to be for you, right? It should co become clear that all intercession is for Allah. So I seek it from him. So I say, O oh Allah, do not deprive me of his intercession. O oh Allah, let him intercede on my behalf and whatever is similar to this. I like this because it teaches me what to say. Because I was getting curious, like, I've only ever made my prayers directly to Allah, right? But I guess some people, instead of them saying, O oh, so-and-so, tell Allah this. No, you should say, Oh, well, I let him intercede. You see the the importance of the language? I really like that. Because it's like, if you know semantics, and you're good at philosophy, you get into like little legal language a lot. Right? Like, you pay attention to the words and how they're placed. So whoever translated this did a fantastic job. Because it really makes the difference here. And then the other one that says, Oh Allah, let him intercede on my behalf and whatever is similar to this. So that covers the end, right? Whatever is similar. You're not restricting it, but whatever is similar within boundaries that is permitted. I mean, it's, it's just quite brilliant. But if he says, The Prophet, peace be upon him, was granted the intercession and I seek it from the one it was given to, then the response to this is, that Allah granted him the right of intercession 
pro- prohibited you from this action, as he said. So do not invoke anyone along with Allah. Surah Al Jinn, seventy-two, eighteen. Because <laughs> if you notice here, oh, I was taken from the one it was given to. Because sometimes, I, okay, being in the restaurant industry, this to me. It's, it's really brilliant how this is laid out. I'll put it in like a real world example because it already is so clear, but I feel like this makes sense. Let me try to do my best to see how I process this because it took me a while to kind of get the real concept of the difference between monotheism and other faiths, right? And intercessors. But you have a restaurant owner, they delegate to the manager certain duties. So if I'm a server, and I'm handling a table, I see that the chef has his jurisdiction, the manager has his jurisdiction, the bar manager has his jurisdiction, and then the boss has the control over everybody. But if you go to him for something, he will tell you, oh, go to so-and-so, I don't got time for this. Some bosses will literally tell you that. I don't got time for this. So-and-so is the manager. Take it to him and get out of my office, right? They don't want to hear certain minor uh, complaints or issues. They tell you to go to the manager, and yet sometimes you go to the manager, they're like, oh, you gotta take it to their boss, right? So here, it's like, if you're seeking intercession from someone who you think is the managerial figure in the theological realm, sometimes your brain may think, well, clearly God has favored them. They have some special capabilities and abilities Therefore, it's okay, because if they they must have been given something because of their righteousness and they have a little bit more leverage, right? So I'm afraid to go directly because I think I might be rejected. So I'll go to something minor in hopes that this will aid and put weight behind what I've asked. So for me in the restaurant industry, if you're afraid to go to the big boss, you might ask the manager, and if they say no, then you're like, okay, now I gotta go here. But what's brilliant is that this explains how seeking intercession just because someone was granted that ability on Judgment Day is not a green light to commit shirk. And that it is shirk to place your trust in something than, you know, other than Allah, you have done something wrong. Because in the believers, they should how, do, how does the phrase go? The believers should solely put their trust in Allah, right? True believers only seek Allah as the disposer of affairs, right? All bounty comes from Allah, all authority. He can humble whom he wills. He can raise whom he wills. He does as he wills. No one can control him. He's in full control, right? And we are blessed because we have a direct link which the verse come to a word which is just between us and you, right? Remember that ayat? So we have that uniqueness in our religion, right? We don't have to dance around the manager. There is none, right? We get to go directly to God, and God is in control of everything. There's no demigods like in Greek mythology that are making a mess and being crazy. Right? There is none of that. So here, he makes it clear again with Sir al Jin. So do not invoke anyone along with Allah. So, do not seek the angels. Do not seek the jinn. Do not seek any of the prophets. Nada. That is clear. It's really cool because you get to see like, oh, you know? And he guides you step through step. And so it's important for us to remember that he said, the people of Tawheed, which then begs the question, what is Tawheed, his lordship, his you know, worship, and then his names and attributes, right? And you should study that. And that you should become familiar with that so that you can get this permission by his permission on Judgment Day. Right? And you can be, you know, more favorable in the eyes of Allah, as well as making sure you resist sin 
and other things. But he's made it quite clear for us here, and he lays it out again, that just because the prophet peace be upon him was granted intercession on the day of judgment, doesn't mean you seek to supplicate to the prophet. You don't do that. That's what he's laid out here. So, <laughs> very educational.